Hey guys, welcome to the channel. In this video, I'll be sharing seven steps to follow in order to become a successful Bluetooth Low Energy developer. I was first introduced to Bluetooth Low Energy or BLE in 2014 while working at a consulting company. And we had a client that wanted to develop a Bluetooth connected door lock. Now my team was in charge of developing the firmware that would run on the microcontroller embedded within that door lock. I clearly remember BLE being a very difficult topic to grasp and I felt really lost at the time. A BLE has many unique terminologies that mean specific things and I remember the learning curve being very steep. Because the project was on a bit of a tight deadline, I did not have the luxury to go and research and read many books on BLE in order to make things easier. Instead I learned on the job while developing the firmware and while being deep into the APIs and the SDK for the vendor that provided the microcontroller. But now that I look back at the experience, I know I would have done things differently. So today I want to share with you the seven steps I would follow if I were to go back to the beginning of my journey as a BLE developer. So here we go. Step number one, read a book on Bluetooth Low Energy. Unfortunately, there aren't many books and resources out there, so there's a limited number of options. The two most popular books on the subject are Getting Started with Bluetooth Low Energy from the O'Reilly Publishing Company. The second book is Bluetooth Low Energy, the Developer's Handbook by Robin Hayden. Robin has been involved with Bluetooth since the very beginning, so there's a lot of credibility behind his name and the book. The third book that I want to share with you is Intro to Bluetooth Low Energy, which is a book that I wrote back in 2018. I decided to write this book because the other two books that I mentioned are pretty outdated, and I also wanted to share what I believe is a simpler approach to learning BLE. If you're interested in checking it out, I'll include a link in the description where you can download the book for free as a PDF download. I'll also include links to the other two books that I mentioned. Step number two, experiment with a real development kit. Getting your hands dirty with the hardware, the SDK, and the APIs on any BLE platform will go a long way in helping you understand the basics of how BLE works. And it will provide you with the basic knowledge of how to implement the theory you learned in step one from reading the books and actually developing on a real development kit. BLE development kits range from simple beginner ones such as the Arduino and ESP32, which are mostly targeted at hobby projects, to more professional ones used in most of the BLE products that get released into the market. This includes development kits from Nordic Semiconductor Dialog, TI, Silicon Labs, and others. Now that's if you're looking to develop an embedded BLE device. If you're more interested in the mobile side of things, then start by learning and experimenting with the use of the APIs on any of the platforms that you use, such as Android and iOS. For both scenarios, you'll still benefit from having a BLE mobile app as well as a BLE device, which you can just buy off the shelf. The cheap option that I use as a BLE device is a simple BLE smart light bulb. I'll include a link in the description below if you want to check it out. Step number three, build something of your own. Now this doesn't have to be a complex project, just think of something simple. Maybe come up with an idea to solve a simple problem that you encounter in your daily life. For example, you could build a simple mobile app that controls the BLE light bulb or a BLE sensor that just reads the temperature when you place it in a room. So most importantly, just keep it simple because all you want to do here is learn the basics and go through the whole development process from coding all the way to testing. Step number four, attend a BLE webinar. There is no shortage of recorded webinars on YouTube on the topic of BLE. I know some of them are way too long and boring, but you don't have to watch them all. Just pick and choose the parts and the ones that seem the most interesting to you. And also keep an eye out here on my channel for more and more technical tutorials and videos to be released in the near future. Step number five, join a BLE community or forum online. Different BLE chipset vendors will have forums online to answer questions that their customers have with regards to APIs, their SDK, the hardware, and so on. So once you get started and you get more familiar with the SDK and the APIs and, and the hardware that you're using for developing, for sure more questions will come up and you will want to get those answered. And in that case, the best place to go is the forum of the vendor of a development kit that you're using. Another really good resource online, especially if you're developing BLE, 
BLE mobile apps is Stack Overflow. Stack Overflow has many BLE related questions and answers, especially if you're developing on iOS, Android, or Linux. And on my website, I host a Bluetooth developer community of beginners and experts where we help each other learn the new features of Bluetooth or learn how to solve some of the problems and challenges that we face in our everyday projects. Step number six, buy a Bluetooth sniffer. When you're past the beginner stage and you've gained some experience, you'll want to get yourself a Bluetooth sniffer. Now, Bluetooth sniffers range from simple development kit based ones all the way to more professional ones. Simple development kit ones such as the Nordic NRF sniffer, they cost under $100 usually, and they have some limitations, but they'll do well in a lot of scenarios. Then you have the commercial and more professional solutions from companies like Elisys and Frontline. Now these range in cost between five or $10,000 all the way up to over $30,000. So they're a big investment. Now a BLE sniffer will help you in two ways. Not only will it help you debug and solve some of the problems with sniffing and looking at the packets going over the air between two BLE devices, but it'll also help you learn more about the inner workings of BLE and the sequence of packets and the different packets that go between the two devices. Step number seven, read the Bluetooth core specification document. Now, obviously I don't mean go and read it from beginner to end because this document is almost 3000 pages. No one will go and read it from beginning to end. But what I refer to is using it as a reference to find answers to specific questions that you have about how BLE works. Some of the APIs in, in the SDKs from different vendors assume that you know some of the things about BLE and how it works. And sometimes the only way to find the answer to those questions is by referring back to the core specification document. So guys, that's it. Those are the seven steps I would have followed if I had to go back to my beginning in the journey of becoming a BLE developer. So I hope you found the tips and the information in this video helpful. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell to be notified when I publish the next video in this Bluetooth developer series. And I'll see you guys in the next one.